Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events, and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. The great thing about the mansion is not only the people and the things that happen within the mansion, it is the wonderful things that occur at the mansion, such as where I'm sitting now. This is a bit of history. I know it looks like just a piano, a very large piano, but it is history. This piano is the wonderful Baldwin Concert Grand Piano that actually toured with Liberace. This piano was made in 1929. On our program today, I promise you, you will hear this piano sing by a very special guest on our program. A man whose hands have become a key to the success of a movie. It's an amazing story. You'll meet him and more about this piano in just a few minutes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Mark Chinook from Monday's Dark, and you are watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. The mastery of a piano. It is so much more than most people think. It is not only the physical mastery of the piano, it is the brain of those who play. It's the talent that comes from the heart. But more important, it is the passion that they feel. Liberace was one of the greatest who had that passion. He always heard that passion through his hands. Our very special guest on the program today is a man who has that same passion who feels that same way with a piano. A very special guest, Philip Fontenberry. Welcome to our program. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Okay, so you are, as you call yourself, um, the man at the piano. Mm -hmm. Saying you're the man at the piano is one thing. Being the man at the piano is something completely different. Why in your life? has the piano become so critical to who you are? Well, the way music came into my life uh, is the, uh, the main reason. Uh, I was a four-year-old boy in South Mississippi, and uh, one afternoon I was playing outside by myself, and I was overwhelmed by a strange urge to run inside the house and play the piano which makes no sense. When, at four years old? I was four years old, yeah. Uh, so I threw down my toy trucks and a garden hoe where I was digging roads in the dirt and ran inside. I couldn't help myself. I was frozen in place. And it was just the most bizarre thing. But I ran to the piano, and this is what I played. <laughs> I also played this. Wait, wait. Yeah. You did it at four years old? Yes. And you had I, never played uh, piano before? Never played piano before. Um, now you read music. I eventually learned to read music. Uh, but not then. Uh, at that time, well, I couldn't even read words. I was only four. Um, but from that very first moment, I played pretty much like I play now. I, of course, I've evolved and I've studied and uh, gotten older and matured as an artist as well. Now, I know people but, are sitting uh, at home and saying, wait a minute, his mom or his dad must have played piano. No, my parents were at work, you know, at, at the time. It was poor country folk, you know, um, in uh, Marion County, Mississippi. And um, in that moment, I couldn't help myself. And by 12 years old, yeah. you did your first solo. Yeah. Did my at first, 12 years old. First recital, actually. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At 12 years old. Yeah. Once I started school, and got, I was, I guess, about second grade, seven years old, um, I was beginning to uh, understand not just uh, read words, but have uh, put together an understanding of the meaning of words. And that's when my parents felt like it would be a great uh, time for me maybe to begin uh, music lessons to learn to read music as well, because they thought that might be a skill that could come handy at some so time let's, in my, let's, in my life. So let's, um, let's fast forward a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So you have been off-Broadway, mm -hmm. on-Broadway, mm -hmm. Carnegie Hall, yes. 
in Las Vegas, the Smith Center, some of the great, great places in the world yeah. you have performed. I've been very blessed, yes. Do you ever think back to that four-year-old? Oh, every time I put my hands into the piano. It's, it's, I, I always look for that original connection to the source that made me do this in the first place. It's passion. Yeah, absolutely. So in I the beginning, a, you heard me say, you heard me say in the oh beginning, yeah. there is a passion that goes along with this. Absolutely. It consumes you. I was in a piano lesson. Uh, at the, I was studying privately with this brilliant teacher at the Juilliard School one time. And in my lesson, she said to me, if you can play the sound of the universe through the weakest joint of your weakest finger in one note, the universe will spend the rest of eternity trying to figure out what just happened. And so what I learned to do was flatten out my hands and consider the strings to be an extension of my fingers so that what I feel from the universe or from within my own heart, what I hear with my ears, these ultimately must become a slave to eliciting the sound from the piano. The piano itself, I, we all look for the perfect partner to communicate what is within us to play or to say. There, there is something that I believe, yeah. just... It's never been proven, it's never been, nobody's ever said, Steve, you're crazy, but, but there's something that I believe. And that is true artists, not those people who just say they're artists. And I think we have a lot of, in today's world, people who say they're artists and aren't true artists. But true artists take the instrument that they have, whether it be, whether it be their voice, whether it be saxophone, whether it be whatever it is, that which gives them voice and make it sing. What I know of you is you make this, these 88 keys, this incredible piece of furniture sing. Would you show the audience what Absolutely. I mean? had many people on this program that have played piano, played Liberace's pianos. Your playing creates an emotion within people. I felt the emotion that came through your hands. Have you experienced that? Have, have, have audiences experienced that with you? Yes. Um the miracle of a piano, if you ask me, is that it does what an instrument like this should not be able to do. It's essentially hammers hitting strings. It's a percussion thing. But to elicit the soul out of the instrument, to work with the wood, 
all the mechanics, all the components that come together with not just this, but also becoming one with it so that it becomes essentially the surrogate of our own voice. My own, if I could sing, I'd sing, you know. Um, but the beauty of uh, uh, instrumental music is that we can communicate anything through the power of music itself. There is my instrument that I have is my voice. Over time, people have have either known me, liked me, hated me, whichever the case may be, but they always have talked about my voice. That's a wonderful emotion to feel. When people talk about Philip playing piano, it is not just about Philip playing piano. It is about this amazing individual whose head and heart and soul comes through his hands onto these 88 keys. That's the job. I tell people all the time, my job is to show up. And then whenever something is placed before me and the inspiration hits, then I can respond to that. It's all about spirit, ultimately. You were involved in something that I am sure very, very few people know your name being associated with it. But if they watched it, they know your hands. The show is called Behind the Candelabra. It was a story about Liberace. Yes. Whether it was fully truth or not, the one thing that was was his artistry that was in that show. In a moment, we're going to let the audience know your role in that show, but more importantly, how you sensed you being such a critical part of the image of who Liberace is. We'll be right back. Don't go away. I'm telling you, you haven't heard anything. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Eamon Springall of Stitched at the Cosmopolitan, and you're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. If I could do anything, I'd love to play the piano, but I can't. Probably never will. And when you come through artistry, that you sense it, you feel it, you hear it, it's an amazing thing. Once again, our very, very special guest, Philip Fontenberry. Welcome back to the program. Thank you, sir. Let's tell the audience. Let's fill them in. The show was called Behind the Candelabra. It was a story about Liberace. And, and there are things I loved about the show. There were things I did not like about the show. I knew Lee. Um, as a newscaster, uh, I had done a series of stories about Lee and his talent. Uh, I had... I had uh, met him uh, at the Hilton. I was there when when he ran on stage oftentimes. I was there, I had dinner in this house with Lee. Um, so I know a lot about him. The thing that fascinated me the most was the strength that he had. I tell people all the time, he probably had the strongest forearms I've ever come across. The power in his hands were amazing. And he was not this thin, frail individual. He was a very strong man. The difference about Lee, I honestly believe, was that, as I mentioned earlier, it went from his head to his heart to his passion to his hands. When they created the movie Behind the Candelabra, when they created that, they needed somebody to play the piano 
as he did, they went to you. In everything that you've done in your career, everything that you've done in your career, here you become part of a movie where nothing more than your hands are shown. What did it make you feel? What did it make you sense? Where were you in that show mentally? It was um, initially a challenge. I, I was very uh, honored to be invited to submit an image of my hands, uh, first and foremost, which was a little bizarre to me, but that was the first request. Uh, apparently, the producers were looking for someone whose hands would be a close resemblance to Mr. Douglas as well, right. who was portraying the role of Liberace. Uh, where my head was with that, um, beyond being flattered, being honored to, to land this, uh, this job, um, Initially, I had a bit of a struggle about accepting it, to be honest with you, because uh, I had uh, worked at the Liberace Museum and had met a lot of his fans and a lot of people like you who met the man. And the way everyone spoke of him, his generosity, his kindness, his benevolence to our community at large. Um, Amazing philanthropist. Oh, Amazing plus, plus the foundation had mm -hmm. given millions already in scholarships. Exactly. This was important. I mean, this man had left a very positive legacy. He paved the way for other entertainers like uh, Elvis Presley and CeeLo Green, Elton John, Madonna, Lady Gaga. Look at those outfits. And the, the, his special brand of performance, his showmanship goes unmatched even today. Um, he also proved it was possible for piano players like me to have a career beyond just becoming another classical artist. And so it bothered me to be a part of something that um, might cast a negative light on his personal life, you know, because I knew the book that this film was based on. Um, but then I realized I wasn't being asked to portray any part of Liberace's personal life. My job was to represent his... Uh, his Artistry. Yes, his artistry, yes, it absolutely. Was. It and that's why I refer to myself, I'm the man at the piano. And in that instance, my job was to be, be. all that, to nail that down so much so. I'm one of these people, whenever I watch films and there's a piano player on there, I look to see if what I hear is actually what I'm seeing. You could not, though, separate your hands, this talent, from this man at the piano. Not at all. You, you remained Philip Pottenberry at the piano. Yes. But your hands became Liberace. Absolutely. How tough was it for you to play his music knowing you were the man at the piano, but his hands were the ones playing? Um, I was offered original footage of Liberace playing the music in the show. And so I studied these, these, this video footage, and also, of course, the sounds and everything. And you know, the trick was that Liberace never wrote any of those, that piano stuff down. So I had to learn it by ear. Thank mm -hmm. God I could play by ear, right? Um, one of the first things in the audition, they asked if I could submit uh, a video of myself playing his boogie woogie. <laughs> Which is what you see in the in the I think the original, the original. trailer mm -hmm. for the film, exactly. you know. And then yeah, there's I I was so um, stressed to say the least whenever I turned on my computer and there's the an original trailer. I said that's my hand, <laughs> doing that. you know, all that stuff. It's like uh, really learning what what Lee did. I mean, he was so specific about what he did, how he did it, his style of playing, and the truth is, I think. The fact that I was uh, a young kid growing up in America and Liberace was so famous, he was so well known, he was a household name. I heard his recordings, I grew up with his sound in my ears and my own style of playing is so much like his anyway. And so whenever it came time to really work on this material, it was kind of an automatic fit. I'm gonna ask you the tough thing. Okay, be careful. <laughs> you are now in Liberace's home his mansion. Yes. Now at his piano, 1929, signed by him. Wow. Can you play Little Lee? Oh, my favorite.
my favorite too. <laughs> You are an amazing talent. You are an amazing artist. You are a tribute to, to what I think music has been, should be, and will be forever. And, and, and I want to thank you very much for being on the program. Thank you for having me. Let so me say nice. that, uh, that you are welcome back at any time. And what I love about who you are and what you are is that you share your talent. You, you, you look to the generations of the future and you help yes. the generations of the future. And I think as long as we still have musicians like you, we are in a wonderful, wonderful place. Thank well, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. I, I do appreciate it. So do I. It is about music. It's about that sense. It's about that feeling. When it's great, it is amazing. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Frankie Shinta, downtown's king of entertainment. You're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. I just wish I could play a piano like Philip. Just wish I could play a piano like that. Amazing, amazing, amazing. But so is this wonderful Baldwin piano, 1929, as I said earlier. And it is all about the music and what Liberace did in his entire lifetime. Now, speaking about Liberace, I have to tell you about a situation that has me somewhat befuddled. 
Uh, Las Vegas is a great town. It's a great city. And on Las Vegas' wonderful strip sidewalks, there is something called the Walk of Stars. On that sidewalk, like they have in California, are the stars of very, very many performers. The problem is, some of those stars are now being removed so people can put in bollards. Bollards are those, well, I can say they're the protective devices to keep cars off of the sidewalk. But in the process, those walk of stars are going away. Some of those stars include people like Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, Wayne Newton, Rich Little, even Elvis Presley, and the man whose piano that I sit in front of, Liberace. It is a shame. And what I hope really happens is that the elected officials in Las Vegas say, we cannot do this. We need to get those stars of those amazing entertainers back where they were. This is the entertainment capital of the world. Not having those stars, we miss a lot. Until the next time, I'm Steve Shore. Be safe and enjoy life under the Vegas sun. The world of business today is ever-changing. What does it take to move that needle forward? Sometimes it's effective communication, or an extra voice to be heard, or maybe help in turning the right corner. At Consulting America, we provide all of that and more. Get an edge on the competition. Our team offers more than 100 years of business experience, all to help you. For more information, go to consultingamericanow.com or call us at 702-385-385. 5739 Consulting America, developing innovative strategies today. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. I've been proud to host the TV show Under the Vegas Sun. We've had mayors and entertainers and some of the true movers and shakers of Las Vegas. Well, we're growing again. We'll now be seen in 209 cities in America through our network, Walk TV, as well as in six foreign countries and in Las Vegas. We'll also be seen four times each week on Cox Communications, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m., and now Sundays at 7 p.m. on channels 1096 and 96. I just wanted to say thank you. This has been a presentation of VATV.